Okay, if you've had a shoulder subluxation, not a dislocation, subluxation, I'll show you what the difference is in a minute, and you're acute, you're in week one and you need some exercises before, or you're trying to get to the physio, you need to go to the physio, you're trying to get the physio, here's some things to start working on that I give my patients week one. Now, subluxation is not a dislocation, okay? Dislocation is when that shoulder joint is pops out and it's stuck out, gets relocated in hospital. Subluxation is when you feel a little bit of movement, maybe a click, maybe a pop, a little bit of movement. This can happen, happens in my patient, who has thrown a ball. So if you're one of these people, this guy's hypermobile, but if you throw on a ball and, you, and it hurts, and you feel a little bit of movement, and then that day and those next few days, it's really sore, and it's, it's you can move it, but it's sore up here, and the whole thing's a bit tight, and this is the stuff I'm gonna give you. If you look at your shoulder, Here's your shoulder. What can happen is your rotator cuff can tighten up like that and your deltoid over top can tighten up, which gives you a lot of aching, a lot of pain in response to that velocity of movement of that ball moving out. Now, my patient who's hypermobile, the force versus how strong he was here and how quick he threw the ball, and he's not, he's not a baseball or anything, he just threw a ball to his child. He threw it far too hard, went too quick this ball moved forward too quickly, okay, bang, bang. And this wasn't strong enough, he wasn't conditioned enough to handle that. So it moved too much, didn't dislocate, just moved too much. The body then goes in response to protect that. We've got to try and get you out of that because what happens is if that stays in spasm, one, you're in pain, but two, you can get weaker and weaker and weaker. So I'm gonna give you some things to try and sort that out. The first one is isometrics. We've got to think about this rotator cuff as, if you look at that rotator cuff, Subscap, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. Think of those four, if you look at that, as like a grappling hook on a ball, okay? Its primary function is to stabilize that ball, keep it snug in the socket. As you move your arm around, it keeps it centered, all right? Then it also rotates, depending on the muscle group. So we're gonna go through some isometric stuff first, and a little bit of movement um, to help reduce the muscle spasm and increase your tone, drop your pain down. So the first thing you're gonna work on is into an external rotation isometric, all right? Easiest one in the book. What I'll try and go for is maybe a door frame or a wall, and just go up to that point, make a fist, but try and be, if you look at me, try and be in neutral position, okay? Don't you out here or in here, just in neutral, okay? From there, the internal way is put a door on the inside of your palm, and I want you to keep your shoulders back, not forward, back a bit, and then push into that wall. So I'm pushing this way into the wall, okay? Basically as hard as I can below pain. So I don't want to cause any more pain, clearly, if I'm a bit achy, what I really want to have is I'm pushing in, does it actually drop my pain down? Okay, so if you're, if you're pushing in like that, and you can feel, start feeling less ache in your shoulder, you're doing the right thing, okay? You're getting that muscle out of spasm into proper tone and contraction, which drops the pain away. So internal is really good. What would be even more effective, probably for you guys, is external, okay? So I'm gonna push outward. So if I show you this way, I'm gonna push that way there, I'm gonna keep my elbow by my side, just a little bit away, not too far away, but if I look at my shoulders, I don't want them forward, pushing back like that, and then push outwards. So if I'm doing, say, my right arm, I can push this way, push it into the wall. The critical thing about external rotation, don't push with your elbow. If I push with my elbow, that's abduction. I want you to do into an external rotation, all right? So if you push with your thing of the back of your fist, push that way, again, maximal, you can tolerate, as in not causing pain, and if anything, you're feeling less pain when you do it. And you should feel tone here. So we're trying to get tone in the deltoid, in around here, okay, external rotator cuff. You won't feel that until you put your hand there. But pushing as far as you can for 30 seconds. So these isometrics, you want to go for 30 seconds. If you can only tolerate 10, like you're pushing, then it starts getting sore, maybe you're pushing too hard. So remember, I'm talking the maximum you can push below pain for 30 seconds. Some people have to start with 10, okay? So they start with 10 second holds. If you're gonna start with 10, do 10 of them, all right? If you're doing 30 seconds, do three of them. But try and do them on both arms, all right? So meaning even if though you've got one shoulder, that's the sublock shoulder, just while you're waiting for that rep, go around 
and do the other side, okay? So internal, external, super boring, but those ones are gonna help you reduce some of your pain and they're a good one to start with until you get on the floor. The one on the floor is probably the main one that you're gonna find super effective at controlling muscle spasm pain from that subluxation. And the reason for that is you are not just doing external internal rotation, you're teaching your brain to turn the muscles on and hold the ball in the socket. So if you look at your shoulder again, this is like me putting weight down through that, okay? So if I'm doing this position here, I'm putting weight down through that. What it does is it triggers all these muscles to turn on. It also triggers your deltoid to turn on, okay? But there's no movement of the shoulder. So I'm not doing any movement, any sore movement. You probably find you might shake and be a bit weak with this, but you'll be okay with it. So you go to all fours, and all you're doing is going to raise one up. But what I want you to do first off, make sure your spines are neutral, okay? Not be sagging in extension. Keep your neutral on. Keep your core on if you need to. For this position, I want you to be not in retraction. I want you to be in basically in protraction, okay? If you go right to the top and you feel a bit vulnerable, then just come away from the full top part of it, maybe just halfway in between, but you've got to stay there. Now, from that point, if you look at my elbow, I want you to try and see if you can be externally rotated with the shoulder, which means you face the inside of your elbow forward, okay? It's not facing that way. Now, those hypermobile people, you'll find it's really easy to rotate around. Just watch your hand, though. I don't want you rotating your hand out, okay? I want you planting your hand and then rotating your shoulder. So you're using a little bit more cuff here to externally rotate the shoulder, all right? And then from there, you simply raise one arm and hold it there. So I'm pressed away from the floor. I don't need to do a scat press. I can just stay there and hold it. You'll feel that shaking quite a bit. And you'll feel the fatigue in here, but it needs to be good fatigue, not the old pain that you had from maybe when you subluxed it. So good fatigue, again, this one is isometric, but I want you to drop this, the time frame down. So 10 seconds is your max with that. Some people can only sort of handle, like if they're really acute, can handle, you know, one, two, three, and then they need to take, put their hand back down again. That's fine. You want to build to 10 seconds, do 10 of them. Every time you do your left, or well, that's if your left one is your sublux one, okay, you're doing 10 seconds here, holding it, getting some load through, then do the other one. Now, you don't have to raise your arm forward if you feel a bit vulnerable, you can just have it here. You're just having given this one a rest, feeling what normal is on your good side, then going back and repeating, and away you go again, okay? So those isometrics are really, really helpful. You start with those three. Then what I'd always do is extension, but when you've got a... Uh, Sublux shoulder, just be careful with your extension. So this one, you would have seen me do this many times before. Band, not too heavy. Keep it around about sort of elbow height is about right. When you pull back, you've got to be, some people who've had a sublux shoulder is because they've gone forward, all right? So they might find when you do extension, if it's too far forward, they feel a bit vulnerable. So I normally get people go, okay, go all the way forward, all the way back and pull back. For you, what I suggest you start off with is just start off with no tension. Okay, so there it is. Get your shoulder back, not ridiculously re retractive, I just don't want it forward. So pull it back a bit and then walk back and get a bit of tension on, keeping your hand by your side. So already with a bit of tension on, I've switched on back here, a tricep, and a rear delt, and there's a bit of cuff going on. So from there, what I can do is then just pull backwards and increase that range and then return all right so pulling back and then returning if you notice what i'm not doing is letting my shoulder tip forward all right so i'm keeping my shoulder in that position and you may have to reset that where you go okay hang on a minute reset that get that in the right position then add some load on without letting the hand move and then from there just move the hand back and return so you're very isolating the muscles in that shoulder and just working on contract, relax, contract, relax, which is getting that system out of that constant guarding spasm pain that is probably giving you the issues that you've got going on. That's your sort of week one. Work on those four, get to the physio, get it assessed, get it treated, and then hopefully what can happen is those four turn into more dynamic work and strengthening work to try and fix maybe some of that hypermobility or strength issues you've got going on that happened in the first place. 
Hope that helps. See you next time.